Bing, bing, whoop, whoop. Bing, bing, whoop, whoop. Where? Oh, jeez, there it is. <laughs> Sorry, Mark Lynn. That's okay. <laughs> On my phone. Oh. <laughs> Do you I like was my doing sign? a little exploring earlier, yeah. Oh. I did this just for you, Midge's fridge. Nice. You gotta yeah. know whose fridge it is. I'm sure you don't want your That's husband right. sneaking in there. <laughs> yes. But, uh, we figured this would be a good time since everybody's kind of hunkered down to talk about our beer fridges and what's been in there and how long it's been in there uh, okay. and really kind of see what's been going on. All right, we'll try to flip my camera around. Hopefully you let me know if you can see everything. So yep. we kind of keep the top couple shelves for our high volume uh, <laughs> brand. So we have some Centennial in there, some All Day, a couple solid golds hanging out on top and a couple of those. And then some of the bigger bottles usually hang out on the bottom. So we have some of our KBS friends. Uh, some friends at Baker College actually have made me some home brews that I have hiding in here. A um, couple of agaves, a blushing monk, a mystery bottle, and then some of our older bomber bottles that my wife and I are holding on for a special occasion, which probably, honestly, will be in the next couple of weeks because these are the rainy days to drink some of these beers we've been saving. So, got some bolt cutter and some other bigger stuff back there and a bottle of wine. But all right, I showed you mine. What do you got, my friend? <laughs> All right, let's see if I can figure out this uh, <laughs> camera as well. Um, so when we bought our house, this is actually technically a wine fridge. So it had a rack, but um, so this, I'd like to call this like my pace yourself bar. So you can't just <laughs> grab something off the top shelf. And so kind of the opposite of your fridge, our bombers are up top. So our um, larger bottles and then there's this thing here in the way so little mix of all of our barrel aged beers here our center row here is more of our daily drinkers if you will so we have all day luckily uh, we've been blessed with some reds rye cans so we're going to drink those at some point and then uh lowest shelf then is a little mix of everything i've got like year-round beers some barrel aged beers some stuff that like probably even shouldn't be in there at this point so <laughs> i'm gonna work my way through and uh try there some things go. and Fun beer here. We have our family at Mao. I've acquired oh, yeah. a few of those too, so I should probably crack cool. those open. So, Here's a very well rounded beer fridge. That is true. And that's the fun thing about a beer fridge in your house is you get to build it and curate it, if you will. So, like you said, if you want to hold on to um, a beer and you like it at six months or a year old, that's cool. That's up to you. I guess really we can't tell anyone exactly what to do with their beer because we are. In control of it in the process and we age it for you but when it's out in the market that's when we know it's ready for you but then i guess after that it's up to you so um now that we've talked about it for a few minutes i, I think i want to try a couple things in my fridge i don't know if you'll join me for that oh of course i mean we're not just here to look good on social media <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true but, there's more uh, to us yeah, than our Dash what do you want to try? I'll let you go first, Mark. Um, I think, um, John, you had mentioned you have some unlabeled beer. I'm going to grab something that's not labeled, too, and I'm going to try to figure out what it is. Oh, that'll be fun. I have one, too. Like you said, we can kind of finally see those lips either fell off or never got stuck in the first place. So we'll see what we got going on. Let me ever so gracefully move these beers one hand. <laughs> At a time. One, yeah. And if I break it. I'll have to try something else. So again, um, not sure. Ooh. I do know that it's going to be barrel aged because of our gold crown, but um, this is going to be fun. All right. Well, we'll let you get started and I'll take a peek into mine. Here we go. So I have some of the fun ones down here and my unlabeled beer. Yipes, sorry. Is right up front. It's a 12 ounce bottle. I honestly don't remember what this is at all. It's a little older. Our new bottles have a little, in this shoulder section of the bottle, a little uh, Founders Brewing Company embossed on there. So it's older than that. But mine looks pretty clear. So I honestly don't know what this is. So we'll give it a <laughs> chance and check it out. I'm going to set my phone say, in here. You say that, like, mine is not, I mean, it's a darker beer. I wouldn't say I'm... <laughs> Visually looking at it, I don't think it's as dark as like maybe KBS, but it's, I don't know. I'm excited to try this, so. Give it a whirl. All right, you want to pop them and pour them together and see what we got sure. going on? Yep, I feel like we're together. All right, I got my uh, sturdy bottle opener here. 
Yes, I as well. This is a multifunction tool. It's a hammer. It's a bottle opener. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, mystery beer. Pour it into our cup here. If I don't know what it is, we'll just use the shaker pint. <laughs> Since hopefully it'll work for everything. Hmm. Well, there we go. It's still looking pretty clear. What it, What are you thinking at this point that that beer is? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I'll let the aromas kind of come up a little bit. Normally, I'd stir it a little bit if we're doing true sensory to release some of the aromas, but my glass is so full now, I don't want to spill it all over my face. This is, I mean, this could drastically change my day. What do you think you got, Marklin? I don't know. It's got some of that golden color. I'm thinking it might be kind of a double IPA or something. Perhaps. Um, I'm going to take a guess and say that this is, I think this is Underground Mountain Brown, which is a, a barrel-aged version of our um, Sumatra, which is a, a coffee brown. Our mm -hmm. friends at Ferris provide us the, the coffee, and they're um, you know, just down the road from the brewery, which is cool. So that that's my, I'm very confident in my guess. So somehow right. I should let our viewers know if we're right or not, but... So mine, there's not much hop aroma left. There's a touch of bitterness, but it has a lot of kind of caramel malty notes with a pretty good body. So I'm guessing at some point mine might have been a double trouble or a double IPA yes. that we've done a couple times. So the good part hard. about that is that when the hops fade away, you still got 10% alcohol and it turns into a more malt forward beer. Now, granted, we did put a lot of hops in there and they're all basically gone now, but it's, it's definitely changed a lot. So if you leave things in the back corner of your fridge a lot. It's not going to taste anything like what the beer was supposed to be when we started. That's true. Well, and that's a good point too. If you age the, like if you age a beer, certain traits might fall, we use the term fall off or kind of fade away. Um, it's still the, the base kind of core idea of that beer is still there. So it's just, you know, different experience. Yeah. For you, so. yeah, really All right. Keeping stuff cold and out of the sunlight is the main thing. So constant mm -hmm. temperature, I know a lot of people, uh, I used to do it as well, just kind of keep some things in the corner of my basement. We have a little cellar down here. But during the summer, it does get a little warmer still, so you want to try to keep it as consistent as possible. So the fridges help, but, you know, open the doors every now and then and make sure you don't have a huge jar of pickles in there. <laughs> I would be excited about that because I love pickles, John. I know you do not. So um, when we're back together there in the office, um, you can share those with me. Sounds good. All right. I left the fridge open, so everything's gonna be a little warmer, but now that, now that I've guessed, I wanna be sure in what I'm drinking, so um, do you care to join me for a masa gave? Heck yeah, so the one that I have is from our previous year, so we released this beer for the first time last May, as I'm assuming yours is, but the new one's coming out, so I think it'll be fun for us to try how this beer is held up in, you know, yeah. in lieu of the new batch coming out and- Yep, I'm okay. going back. Um, Marklin, I'm lucky enough to only have 12 ounce bottles and you're just drinking all the big ones. <laughs> yep, yeah. Just go big or go home. I didn't. Um, or 30 meetings yeah. going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. This is a beautiful beer. It's a Imperial Lime Goza, which we love barrel aging beers at Founders, mostly mm -hmm. bourbon barrels, but we chose to use tequila barrels. This is about as close as we could get to legally making a margarita. Uh, we're okay with drinking this over ice too which you don't usually hear that about beer but all right i'm i'm having at it no and that's the thing while you're pouring and i'll do the same you know this is a beer that we've come out with two years in a row now so my plan was to be gone with these by the time that next year's ie in a couple weeks came out which is what i kind of used to like to do for some of our beers like kbs that wasn't year round at the time now that it is, you can just keep drinking it. For this one, we'll see how it held up. And I have a couple bottles left, so when that new batch comes out, you know, I'm going to try some of the brand new stuff right next to some of the stuff that uh, I've been holding on to in my fridge for about a year. Mm. To me, this is a little sweeter. I don't know. I'll let you. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on this, too. A lot of that lime that we put in there, you can still smell that in the aroma. Some of the agave is still there, too. I'll be really curious when you have the side-by-side -side comparison, you know, that makes it really fun to kind of try because you can taste the fresh stuff next to it. Now we're kind of just pulling on our, you know, 360 day old memories and seeing how we remember it when it was fresh. But That's true. I think it used to kind of, you know, like the aftertaste kind of gets you in the cheek a little. I feel like that's a little bit um, toned down now. 
but yeah, we are approaching a year. On yeah, this year. I think this year is held up really well. So anybody out there with masagave, you know, you can hold on to it for a little while, but if you still have some, don't don't feel bad. It, it still has that good lime flavor. The agave, the barrel aging is kind of held up as well too. So, you know, for it being the first time we ran with it, this beer has some some length on it in its shelf life. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would make this better, John, is if we were in the same room. I know, we can try the awkward cheers again. All right, I'm not sure. I'll just go this way and then I'll also <laughs> go this way. And then maybe you're up here and then maybe down here. <laughs> so. Sounds good. Cheers. Oh, there you got it. Got <laughs> My phone! 